Hi, I'm Matt Bigot Conway. I'm an assistant professor of city and regional planning at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And today I'm going to talk about my discrete choice models.jl package for discrete choice modeling in Julia. And the goals of this package are to create an expressive domain specific language for specifying random utility models. And I want that model syntax to be very close to the way you would express that model mathematically, like a lot of different Julia statistical packages. I'm looking for high performance um, through multi-threading and distributed model estimation, as well as just through well-written code. I want very flexible model specifications where you can have coefficients that are constrained to be the same across alternatives, as well as you know, coefficients that vary across alternatives with variables that are the same across alternatives. We'll see more of that in a moment. Um, I want to use forward diff.jl to provide automatic differentiation and you know, analytic um, standard errors. I should note that the package is currently pretty experimental. I, I implemented multinomial logit a while ago. Um, mixed logit is still very new, um, but on either of them, I'd be interested to hear you know, folks' feedback. So right now, the package supports multinomial logit and mixed logit models. I also want to support nested logit because I'm in transportation, and that's a model that's used a lot there as well. So I imagine most folks are familiar with what the multinomial logit model looks like, but in case you aren't, the basic idea is you define um, utility functions for each of the alternatives that folks are making decisions between. So in this case, this is a model of transport mode choice, how to get somewhere, car, train, or metro. Um, and so you're going to have three utility functions that define the utility or value of each of these options for each decision maker. You have a constant that just defines kind of their relative, you know, relative values, all else equal. And then in this case, you have two coefficients that are constrained to be the same across all alternatives. So you have a travel time coefficient um, that gets multiplied by the travel time that's specific to each alternative, and you have a cost coefficient that similarly gets multiplied by the cost of each alternative. You could imagine also adding something like income into this model where you would then have a separate coefficient for you know, the effective income on car, train, or Swiss Metro because income is going to be you know, constant for, across the, for a decision maker but might have very different effects on the choice to drive or take the train. So as I mentioned, I wanted the um, model specification in Julia to look very similar to um, what the model specification looked like in math. And I think that I've done a fairly good job of that. So you can see here constructing a multinomial logit model using the utility macro and Julia's metaprogramming capabilities to create a domain specific language. We've defined each of these utility functions and these on the left hand side here, left of the tilde, are the actual values for each choice in the, um, in the data frame. Those don't have to be numeric. They were in this particular data set, but those could be you know, strings or whatever. And then I've written out over here the, um, the actual utility functions. And anything that starts with an alpha or a beta is assumed to be a coefficient to be estimated. And other things are assumed to be variables to be pulled out of your data set. And then you'll notice that I've specified three alternative specific constants. And of course, because the utilities are only meaningful relatively, you need to constrain one of those. Um, so here I've set the starting value for the Swiss Metro um, uh, constant to zero, and then I've said that that's fixed. So that's not going to be estimated. It's just going to be held at zero. And then I specify what column in my data has um, what choice was made. Then I have my, you know, the data frame or dagger distributed table here that has the data in it. And then um, optionally, you can specify the availability if you have some options that aren't available for all your decision makers. For instance, someone who doesn't live near a train and therefore, you know, couldn't make the choice to take the train. Uh, mixed logit models are pretty similar, um, with the difference being that instead of a coefficient being a particular value, it's a, a random distribution. And in order to specify that um, in a way that's you know, similar to the way it would be specified in math, um, you can use any distribution from distributions.jl that has a quantile function to specify the distribution of a coefficient in a mixed logit model. And you, know, you could um, theoretically use something like a Cauchy distribution. I wouldn't recommend it. But anything that has a quantile function um, can be specified as a distribution for a coefficient. And the way you would specify that is your utility functions would still look very similar. You're defining things based on you know, their, um, the coefficients and the variables from your data set. But then down here, you're specifying this coefficient as having 
Instead of specifying a starting value, you're specifying a distribution. In this case, I've specified a log normal distribution, um, starting with a location parameter of negative three and a scale parameter of 0 0.01. I've defined that scale parameter as the exponentiation of negative 4.6. And the reason for that is that scale parameter should always stay positive. Um, so instead of modeling the scale parameter directly, I'm modeling you know, the logarithm of it or optimizing the logarithm of it and then exponentiating that to get a positive scale parameter. And then I've defined the level of randomization on each of these variables to be at the level of ID. This is a panel data set. The ID identifies in each respondent. And so we're assuming that the random variation is between respondents rather than within a single respondent in this case. Um, to estimate a mixed logit model, you integrate the likelihood function over the coefficients. Um, obviously, since any distribution is allowed, um, there's no way to um, no way to integrate that analytically in the general case. So, um, simulated maximum likelihood is used. Um, samples from those distributions are generated using um, Halton sequences from HaltonSequences.jl, um, and then the quantile function to convert those into being distributed. You know, as the distribution chosen. So in addition to um, you know, the mathematical side, there's also the performance side. Um, DCM.jl allows distributed estimation. Um, if you're just using a data frame, which is the, or you know, any tables.jl source, which is the simplest way to use the package, that's going to use all the available threads in your Julia process for higher performance. If you have a bigger problem with a, and you're willing to take on a little more complexity, you can also do estimation on a um, D table from Dagger. I believe it's actually just been split out into a new package. Um, but that allows um, working with tables that are spread across multiple processes or you know, possibly even multiple machines in a cluster. Currently, that's only supported for multinomial logit. And then so here's the, um, you know, the classic slide in a Julia presentation. What's the performance on this look like? Um, and you can see the top two rows are discrete choice models.jl using a data frame and using a dagger D table. Um, we'd expect the D table to be slower because there's more overhead in terms of interprocess communication. And these were all estimated on a single machine. So we're not getting any benefits from you know, multiple machines in a cluster here. And then I've also estimated the same models in Biogeam, um, which is a Python package, and Apollo, which is an R package that are both commonly used. And I've estimated three models. Um, the Swiss Metro um, example from Biogeam, which is a pretty simple multinomial logit model with a little under 7,000 observations and four parameters to be estimated. A uh, model based on the National Household Travel Survey in the US, which has 130,000 observations and 35 parameters. And then a mixed logit, which comes from the examples from Apollo. Um, and I've estimated all these with all three of the softwares and in dcm.jl I haven't estimated the mixed logit using a dtable because that's not currently supported and you can see for the most part um, for the Swiss Metro example the all the software is you know kind of pretty similar a little under a second to estimate that except the dtable which is you know what we would expect because the um, because of the overhead of distributed computing is not really worthwhile for such a small problem but then when we look at some of the bigger ones, for the multinomial logit model on the National Household Travel Survey, um, the Julia package is performing almost an order of magnitude faster than the, the other packages, um, estimating that in 20 seconds. Um, if you use the dtable implementation, it takes a little over a minute, again, because you're, you have that overhead of distributed computing while still running on the same machine that um, was running with the data frame. So you're not seeing that benefit of spreading across a cluster there. And then for the mixed logit, runtimes are pretty similar across all the packages, although the Julia package does um, win by a little bit. So um, that's what I've got. I'm certainly interested to hear any comments. My email's there. You can also catch me in the Julia Slack. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot.